Uh, welcome back to the Raisina Fireside Chats. Uh, we thank you to the Raisina Dialogues for having us here. And welcome uh, Jeb Nadinar from Washington, D.C. to this exciting topic of how uh, democracies and countries can insulate themselves from future shocks and over-dependence on China uh, when it comes to their supply chains, digitals, or otherwise. So, Jeff, um, Jeff, without taking much time, let me kick off with that opening thought. How do you, how do you think democracies should work together? How long do you think this process is going to be to insulate and to move to, you know, to hedge their bets, which are today probably over dependent on China when it comes to supply chains? Uh, thank you. Pleasure to be with you, Arvind, and to be with ORF at Racina. Uh, I think supply chains are beginning to decouple. They won't decouple in full with China, but it'll be a partial decoupling. Um, it'll be depending on what the article is that's made in China, if it's a Barbie doll, uh, or it's a toy, or even if it's a television, it may not be very important, but if it's uh, critical infrastructure that goes into your 5G networks, or the batteries for your cars, I think there's going to be some duplication of supply chains. I think this is a multi-generational effort. This will take 20 or 30 years. It will cost quite a bit. And I think depending on what governments do, business will be more or less successful in creating these duplicate supply chains. While, and you've just said a very key thing in this, that this is a multi-generation thing. Um, I, you know, China has overtly or covertly, implicitly or explicitly supported uh, their national technology companies or national companies, as they call them, national um, companies. Uh, they're not going to take this lying down. They're going to, you know, they're going to flex their muscles. They're going to, they're going to do everything to ensure that the alternates or the duplicates are not found so easily. And um, and 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 in a, in a, you know, uh, so what's your thought on that? What's your thought? Uh, what's your advice to democracies to how do you manage this um, a, a very uh, slippery uh, task of moving and hedging? Uh, away from China while also maintaining in the interim period um, a good relationship with China? Well, this is going to require statecraft. Metternich, uh, Castelo had to balance certain sort of forms of power. Our countries will have to do the same thing. This will be very challenging because uh, China will increase subsidies, China will increase theft, China will uh, shut off supplies or slow down supplies to indicate that who's in charge with certain supply chains. Uh, so I think we all have to be prepared for a very rocky road, and it's going, there'll be even some points of danger. And that's, uh, that's something that um, I think uh, all of us have to, as you rightly said, it will require a lot of statecraft, and uh, especially um, uh, countries which, uh, you know, where, where China is seeing a threat coming from, will also see a lot of um, attention from China, if I put it in a mild term. So um, do you foresee that atten uh, attention from China um, uh, uh, to those countries where it foresees a threat in those uh, decoupling of the supply chains? Yeah, I, s I can see certain countries are going to align with China, uh, may even not want to, but they'll find uh, Chinese blandishments, Chinese terms very attractive. But other countries will have to make a choice um, are they going to be with a democratically aligned system that shares many common values, has a common financial structure? You can see financial structures are beginning to pull apart. When Russia got expelled from the international financial system, it doesn't mean that one can't do business with Russia. It just means it's more difficult. It costs more. One has to barter um, more basis points. Um, China's clearly creating its own financial system with certain um, benefits for those that participate in it. But I think ultimately the democratic system of, fi of finance will be more attractive. Now I think, uh, let me ask you a question. Um, sure. You've written a lot about uh, the digital age. What about the hardware that the digital age depends on and the fact that so much of it is made in, in China? Well, Jeb, thank you for that question because see, India has a very, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a very, very um, uh, balancing act to do, if I may say. Um, China has uh, 
uh, the highest number of uh, troops on our borders right now. Um, last two years, we've seen a few skirmishes. Uh, things are normalizing. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as we say that, India did uh, take its national interest first in, uh, in, in banning uh, over 300 plus uh, Chinese platforms and Chinese technology from India. Um, in, in, the, in the 5G trials, uh, uh, you know, we, we have shown a lot of intent to uh, not use Chinese uh, equipment. In fact, they have not been given permission. Uh, so coming to hardware, and that's where the trickiness is, because, uh, you know, as you know, whether it's our ambitions in, uh, in electric vehicles or it's our ambitions in uh, digital platforms, which are, which are hardware dependent, a lot of uh, chips still come from China. And, and that's where I think uh, India is playing a very balancing act. While we are doing, I, I think, a three-pronged strategy to do as much domestic as possible, it's not going to happen overnight. Two, we are, uh, you know, we are working with friendly countries, other democratic countries, to create alternate supply chains, as you rightly said. Um, but a, a lot of thrust on domestic uh, semiconductor machine, uh, a lot of thrust on domestic manufacturing uh, for, for, the, uh, for the smart components. And, uh, and a great success has been found um, uh, in, in many, many of those uh, um, end products. But a lot needs to be done. And in that respect, uh, till we have a lot of dependence, not only on the digital uh, uh, hardware and digital chips on China, uh, you know, we, we thankfully have good relationships with, with Taiwan. We have good relationships with many other countries which can supply. But still, there's an over-dependence on China. And I think it's work in progress. Um, but there is a clearly a strategic intent uh, from the leadership top down that we need to create alternates and slowly migrate away from there. China has an advantage in capital intensive industries. And it's been largely done on the backs of its population because people earn money and can't spend it and the government can subsidize these industries. And the world found it very convenient to have China make the capital expenditures uh, for these industries, and instead uh, in the U.S. and in India to focus on development of intellectual property, to focus on services. Um, the one, uh, this will take a generation. Uh, however, the one strength that we have is the network of countries. That's right. We're talking right. about such a, it's a vast series of countries with immense capabilities. So starting with India, and if you go all the way to Europe, so we're talking about the U.S., Mexico, Taiwan, Malaysia, uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Europe to Israel, and even countries like the UAE. So that network is going to have to perform over time. And I think one of the key issues are what do, what do the governments do to incentivize the network that's uh, thread across the world? See, I, I, you know, that's a, you bring about a very interesting point. And I think um, talking about digital, you see, there has been um, three philosophies while, while the digital platforms are being built globally. One is the what I call the Senjan Valley model, which is the, uh, uh, the Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, uh, uh, and, and the ByteDance, uh, the BB80 companies. And then there has been the companies coming, the platforms coming from Silicon Valley. Um, India has actually um, created a third platform, which is a public, um, you know, uh, which is more a digital public goods called the India stack or the health stack. And the approach India is doing and has, is willing to share with the world and vaccine, the vaccine platform India just recently created and shared with many countries is, is, is a testimony of what, what you just said, that India wants to work with democracies, create open platforms. And, and share that knowledge. And I've, we've seen that alignment happen in a very, very short period of time. Earlier, this would have taken years of diplomacy and, and talking. But I think the world is recognizing that the, the, the alignment um, and the standardization of many technologies, um, people need to come together. Uh, countries need, need, need not reinvent the wheel and share technology, share uh, you know, digital uh, open goods so that the societies get benefit. And, uh, and countries are working together. I see a lot of future in this in this whole approach of uh, digital for good and uh, and uh, open uh, common technology, open platforms. So I think one of the things the governments need to do is <clears throat> they need to give some clear incentives to the market that they intend. Talking about the friendly governments stretching from India through the U.S. Uh, to Europe, 
say, we do have the intent to create an alternative set of global supply chains in key materials. Key materials are things like semiconductors, electronics, network devices, uh, batteries, <clears throat> things like that. And we're going to incentivize you. Now, I don't think we should wait for a massive trade agreement. I think that takes too long to negotiate. We have professional negotiators that could stretch this out for 15 or 20 years. But I think the governments come together. Imagine a meeting of uh, Modi and Biden together, along with a set of other leaders, and say that each country will give its incentives in its own way. Because after all, we are about the sovereignty of each country. That's what we share. Um, so they come together. <clears throat> some countries will focus on subsidies. Some will focus on uh, mm. regulatory changes, some will do tax incentives, some will do a combination of that. But each in its own way will subsidize it and over time the market will find that some countries specialize in certain areas and other, they develop a competency and other countries specialize in different areas. And over time you'll develop the supply chains you need. So that's my modest proposal. And I think those recommendations are very, very in line with what uh, you know, countries like India are thinking. So, Jeb, you are spot on on that, let me tell you that. But if I, if I ask you a, um, a more pointed question, um, is, um, you know, we are here at Ricina 2022. Um, I think uh, the trigger was to rethink a lot of this was probably COVID and, and the disruptions we saw during COVID and the dependence we saw both on the digital side and also on the medical side, on the healthcare side. Um, especially the APIs uh, for, for a lot of critical uh, um, uh, medicines. Um, what, is, what is that is your, uh, in your opinion, apart from the facts, you know, the incentives and the, um, and the cooperation, some of the other things in terms of capability building standards that you, 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 you want uh, India and Indian uh, leadership to think about? Well, I think first While we are doing this very tough balancing act. Yeah. Um, we're not going to all have exactly the same standards. We're going to have different interpretations of certain values. Um, I think in the very technical areas, that's really where it's very important to focus because you cannot run a common uh, open platform if you have very different technical standards. But in terms of things like, let's say, environmental laws or labor laws, um, there are going to be some differences. Uh, and different focuses. Some countries will be more focused on green and others less so. Uh, I don't think we should let that stop the development of supply chains. I think we should let that iron itself out over time. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I want to... Uh, so, uh, I think, uh, uh, Jeb, in conclusion, in the last few minutes that we have in this uh, uh, exciting fireside chat, um, what what would be the low-hanging fruit in terms of which supply chains? And, um, and, and I don't want to put you on a spot, but what is those low-hanging fruit, which are which a combination of what countries can move fast, number one, and two, what are, is immediately required for our societal development or for innovation? What do you think are those few uh, you know, uh, areas that first India and other countries should concentrate on? Well, I... Um I know what the U.S. should focus on. The U.S. has to focus on bringing more production capacity in semiconductors. That's an imperative. The U.S. is down to around 12% of global production. It uh, needs to be higher. Um, I would say something that uh, we would look to India for, mineral processing. And to do so, not, not with yesterday's technologies, but Absolutely. with tomorrow's technologies. There are new ways of processing minerals cleaner ways of doing so. This is an area that India could be a leader in something that's growing immensely. Um, because there are, a lot of, there are a lot of companies that can assemble battery cells and make battery packs. The fact is, among the uh, democratic friends and allies, very few of them can process minerals. So that's, that's interesting. You talk about number one is chips, which is, I think, the, you know, the world recognizes it, recognizes it, but also minerals. I think I, if I may add in the final few moments is that I think we also need to work uh, on independent payment systems, um, creating uh, more robust payment systems, uh, interoperable uh, um, 
you know, identity platforms, skilling platforms. This will go a long way in building trust as well as, um, you know, um, uh, and, and uh, sh showing the capability that we have uh, apart from uh, many other areas. Uh, what we are seeing is that, um, uh, you know, three things are becoming even more critical as this uh, Ukraine-Russia crisis is going on. Identity, money, which is banks and financial systems uh, and, and skills uh, as we go forward. And I think those are the areas, apart from the ones that you mentioned, that I think um, countries should come together to solve for and uh, really uh, not only solve for themselves, but also offer it to others. Yes. With that, I think uh, we have had a very exciting round of uh, uh, fireside chat here at the Raisina Dialogues 2022. Thank you, ORF, and all the young team of organizers that have helped us uh, uh, get this done. Thank you.